Hi there everybody, my name is John Clark. In today's tutorial I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea on how I go about converting a color photo to a black and white one. Now like a lot of you, I've used the Nick Silver Effects module to do this for quite a few years now and frankly it was phenomenal in how it handled this. But unfortunately we heard a few months ago that Google is no longer going to support this so a lot of people are concerned that uh, these software modules are just not going to work anymore. Today I use On One Raw to do my black and white conversions as well as much of my basic editing needs. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into my workflow, hopefully you'll be able to pick up a tip or two along the way and um, here we go. Let's go edit some photos. Okay, so now you can see we've got On One Raw 2017 open right now and I'm in the grid view here. You can see some of the photos that uh, we're going to show you or we're going to work with uh, today. So what I really liked here was I found a spot. It's a parking garage in Chicago. Um, if you want to look it up, it's at the corner of Lake and Wells and it gives you this fabulous view uh, almost straight down on top of the, sh of the uh, L train. Uh, I don't know if it's a train or if it's a subway, but it's the rapid transit system that uh, clanks around the, the city over there. So to take a better look at your photos, you can either hit the E key, uh, which stands for echo, or you can go down in the bottom corner here and it will give you this full view uh, of the pictures itself. Um, you can also, if you prefer to go into the film strip, uh, hit the F key, uh, and go into the go into it that way. So I was able to shoot a few different photos over here. I um, actually spent a, a fair amount of time looking at uh, the different angles. Really, there's only one angle. It's almost straight down. Um, but uh, the, the cars come around at, at different times on the track. The challenge, of course, is going to be um, shooting these things. You cannot set up for a tripod, and the, they have a gigantic, heavy concrete wall, and you basically have to stick your arms out through this decorative grate here, hold your camera. Camera, uh, as securely as you can, wrap uh, uh, something around your wrist if you have a, a wrist strap or uh, the shoulder strap, just so you make sure you don't drop it, and uh, try to hold on and point and frame as, as best you can. Now what happens though is uh, you're going to get slightly different framing for each one of these shots. And you can see that it kind of shifts around a little bit here uh, because of the way that I was holding my camera. Now. I stayed there for quite a while, but of course my time in Chicago was somewhat limited and I wanted to go to different uh, views of the city and try some different shots as well. So I never was able to get a shot of multiple L cars at the same time. However, that's an easy fix. So let's go back over here into grid view and we're going to start off working in Photoshop. So I'm going to choose the two pictures here um, on the, in the middle, the one of the cars going straight across and the car curving around uh, the uh, building here in the corner. So what we'll do is we'll select both of those. We will right click, drop down to send to Adobe Photoshop. And then we have a choice at this point. We can either edit a uh, copy with the standard settings applied. Uh, if we had done anything in develop or the effects modules or anything else, it would automatically transfer those over into Photoshop. Or you can choose to edit the original. Now, if you edit the original, you're going to end up with uh, going into Adobe Camera Raw right off of the bat. Or you can choose to edit a copy, in which case you'll also end up with a second copy in your folder when you're done. So pick your poison. In this case, I think I'll prefer to just to edit a copy, even though we've done nothing at this point, just because that way I, I have a better safe than sorry second copy going on. So let's hit the edit button, and this would probably be a pretty good time to uh, just take an intermission while uh, Adobe Photoshop is uh, loading up here. Okay, welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed that quick intermission. So you can see right now we're in uh, Adobe Photoshop CC. I've got my two files open. Uh, one, both of the, them on separate tabs up at the top and you can see as we selected they are now copies. So we are working on copies of the original file. So the first thing that we want to do is put both of these together on one layer. So what I'm going to do is grab the Move tool, which is a little cross in the upper uh, left corner over here. Just uh, hold down and drag this until we come up onto the other layer and just drop it. And at this point, you know, it's funny. It really doesn't matter where we drop it because we're going to use the magic of Photoshop to do the hard lifting for us in this case. So to get these things a Line, the best thing to do is just simply uh, hold down the shift key and select both of those layers, 
move up to the edit panel and uh, go to auto align layers. And at this point we get a, a dialog box which will allow us to choose different ways that we can do it. The fastest, easiest, and uh, usually the most successful one I've found is just simply let uh, hit the auto button here, let Adobe really kind of figure out what it's supposed to do, let the computers do their thing, and basically voila. It's that quick and we've got these two layers aligned. And if you toggle this uh, on and off, you can see just looking at the tracks, you know, if you look at this track line right here, or the ones that curve up, you can see how good it is in terms of making these align themselves. So the next step is to get both of these trains on one image. So what I want to do is use masking and composite this together. So I think it's going to be easier for us to take this single train uh, and mask that in versus trying to do the one that uh, has the train running around the building. So I'm going to grab the bottom layer, put the train that going around the building on the top. We're going to come down to the corner. We're going to add a mask. Uh, and you can see that we have our white mask built up over here. And then it's sort of just a simple matter of painting this in. So make sure that your color palette is set to black and white. If you need to, you can click on the default icons over here and it'll turn it to black and white for you. Because we are hiding everything with a white mask, we're going to use black to paint it in. Remember, black reveals and white conceals. So grab the paint brush over here and where you know the train is at, just start painting that in. Hold down the, hold down the uh, mouse button and just start painting it in. And, <laughs> man, I will never get tired of this. This, is, this to me is just pure magic, um, just watching this thing, something like this reveal. So this is at the front of the train. We want to be a little bit more careful. Uh, we'll zoom up into 100% uh, and come down to the front of the train. And the reason why you can see here, if I start painting, I'm going to actually paint out the corner of the train over here, and I do not want that. So let me hit Command Z to undo that, and then we're just going to be real careful when we start coming up. And maybe we should uh, lower down the uh, brush just a little bit. So hit the uh, bracket keys. Uh, the right bracket key will enlarge. The left bracket key will make things a little bit smaller. Uh, the brush that is. So we'll just go along, we'll just make sure everything is uh, in good shape over here, we'll go along all the edges, just make sure everything is 100% the way we want it to be, and uh, it's looking looking really, really sharp. So I like this, <laughs> and like I said, to me this is just magic. I'll never get tired of actually um, masking in images, whether they use uh, blending layers or masks or things like that. It's, uh, it's just pure magic to me. So if we hit control zero, uh, or, uh, we'll get this back to fill the screen size, and uh, I'm just going to make sure that the bottom layer looks right. Uh, if you look along the bottom, I don't know if it'll show up on your screen or not. There's just a, a fine little edge right over here. And this is where the two images uh, are, are overlapping. And there's just not quite enough space over here uh, from the bottom image. We're, we're getting a little bit of the blending in there. So I'm just going to use this to uh, erase that as well. Make sure that this blends in seamlessly. Now this looks awesome. So we basically went from two single shots with a, with one train in it. Uh, instead of waiting all day for this to happen uh, in real life, we were able to, to take a few seconds in the computer and we actually made this vision that, that we had. So at this point, what I want to do is crop this. Um, uh, there's options up here. Uh, if you hit the crop tool, which is the, uh, the kind of uh, square uh, icon over here, uh, and you go to the drop down box. There's a lot of different ways that you can crop this. Uh, if you want to go for a square ratio or 8 by 10, 4 by 6, whatever your choice is. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to choose my original ratio. I'm going to drag these corners in just a little bit um, just to try to get rid of some of that edging where we had um, nothing uh, to fill that space. And what I want to do is try to get a little bit more of the building in uh, at the top over here. Uh, and shift that so we get as much of the train tracks on the bottom as we can. And I think that actually looks really nice. We'll hit uh, the check mark uh, or the enter key, both of which are going for the apply button. And then at this case, uh, we'll do a save as. And the save as is going to put it back in uh, our original folder if we have that selected. So let me type in composite image and hit save. And uh, we'll get the same format icon. If you don't have this show box again, it's going to come up every time. And just make sure that you want to uh, do this in terms of making sure that it maximizes capability with 
uh, all different versions of Photoshop. So usually I just click OK on that. Uh, you can see down here on the bottom it's going to take a few seconds to do that. So why don't we take another pause at this point as well. Okay, so now we have our composite image back in on one raw. We're in the browse mode, and if you recall, we have not done a single thing yet uh, aside from blend those two images together. There haven't been any adjustments made, so this is basically just the two images straight out of the camera. So now we can start to go and tackle some of the finer details of actually developing this. So the first thing we'll do is we'll hit over into the develop module. Just click on the little uh, aperture type of icon, and it'll take a second to load it up over here. And basically what uh, the develop module is, is uh, just a raw processor, just like any other uh, uh, processor that you'll find in Lightroom, uh, Adobe Camera Raw, things like that. So the easiest thing to do um, is the, the exposure itself looks probably pretty good. We might be able to bump that up uh, maybe just, just a tick. Uh, that looks pretty good there as well. The other thing that I like to do is just uh, click on the histogram uh, to make sure that the that this looks good and actually does look pretty good. You can see over here on the edge that the uh, there is a little bit of clipping going on. So if we click on the arrows on the top, uh, we can see what's actually happening. Red means that the highlights are being blown out and blue would mean that the shadows are, are just going too dark. You can see just a little hint of blue in the corners over here. I'm not too worried about that. Uh, this obviously is a problem. So let's back down on the whites uh, to see if we can pull that out a little bit and you can see that they uh, actually won't 100% go away but we can drop them down quite a bit. We can also try to, to uh, back down our highlights uh, just a little bit over there. So that looks pretty good overall. I think uh, that's a pretty good start for where we're going to go from here. So the next step will be to, to jump into the effects module. That's the little FX starburst over here. We'll click on that and it loads up almost instantly. The first thing that we can do is change this to black and white because that's obviously what we wanted to do. This is a gritty urban scene here uh, and it looks like it's going to go very well in black and white. And you can see on my side panel over here there's a ton of different uh, black and white presets that are out, uh, available on, on, on one. You can kind of click through them and, and see you know, how, that, how, they, how that works, what you like about them, what you don't like about them. And uh, it's, it, it's pretty instantaneous on, on how that works. Um, what I want to do, though, is, is basically create my own. So I'm going to hit the reset icon over here. I'm going to close this panel by double clicking the, the two little arrows over here to give it a little bit more real estate. And uh, click on the add a filter. So the first thing we want to do is add a black and white filter, and, and that does a pretty nice job overall. Um, what I think we want to do, though, is just play a little bit, uh, maybe with some of the tone uh, and the contrast. Uh, let's try to brighten this up just, just a tick. Um, play with the contrast. Um, you know, Again, as I mentioned, I like to just really slide wide and see, what, see what's happening and then uh, start to hone in on some of the different areas. I'm going to uh, increase the shadows just a little bit over here, mostly to try to get this area of the tracks just to pull up just a little bit. The other thing that I want to be able to do is play around with these color sliders, and this is going to play around with the uh, different areas that of color in the image itself. And again, go wide, see what's happening over here. And it might not look like there's a whole lot going on until you start looking up at the textures in this brick building up here. And as I go back and forth, you'll be able to see them kind of getting darker, getting a little bit lighter. Uh, I want to bring those textures out, so I'm going to slide that pretty high up over here. Uh, again, we'll do the same thing with the yellows. Uh, definitely, you can see a lot more, lot more changes going on in the yellows as we move back and forth over here. Uh, we'll increase that up just a little bit. And I think you'll see uh, just some, some bit of the changes going on in the green as well. So we'll try to increase uh, the greens a bit as well. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on in the blues that I can see, so we'll just double click on uh, sorry the aqua side there. Uh, the blues uh, is going to be the same thing. We'll leave the blues where they're at. And then finally, we'll just see what's happening to magentas. Not a lot going on in the magenta side either. So I think it looks like we've got a pretty good base now for our black and white. And if you want to see uh, where we came from, you click on the preview button. Uh, that's the color image. Uh, and then if you hit it again, you'll see the black and white image. 
Now the next filter I'm going to add on here, just click on the add filter, is going to be dynamic contrast. Dynamic contrast is a phenomenal filter here that uh, goes on almost every one of my images, but it's also one you've got to be a little bit careful of. And you can see what happens simply by clicking on and off the checkbox, and this is adding a lot of sharpening to it. But we got to be careful because it can really add too much sharpening. It's able, easy to uh, kind of make things a little bit too crunchy uh, so that they don't look natural. That's not such a concern in this case, obviously, because this is a very gritty urban scene that we have going on. But I still think it's just a little bit too heavy handed. So we're going to back that down uh, just a little bit, maybe around 75 or so. Uh, and you can see it, it makes quite a bit of difference, especially in the areas where we want it really to stand out. And that's this, this quadrant over here where the, where the tracks are at. Um, I feel like this might be just a little bit too, too heavy too with uh, some of the uh, large and medium um, sharpening areas that it's looking at over here. So uh, toggling it on and off, I think that that's actually looking pretty good now. Um, I feel like I like where that's at. Maybe we'll bump that up just a little bit. Um, just to just to bring a little bit of that sharpness in there. So we've got a really good gritty urban feel going on. Finally, the last thing that I'm going to do, and uh, I, again, this goes on almost every one of my images, is a vignette. So if I click on the vignette filter, we've got a few different options over here. I really like this big softy. Um, that's one that, one of my favorites. Um, but it does come in a little bit strong. So uh, again, adjust the brightness. You can see what happens as, as we take it off, as we bring it back in. Um, I usually end up somewhere... Uh, you know, around negative 60 to 70 uh, is kind of the range that, that I'm in. And you can see uh, what's going on over here. Now, I really, though, uh, don't like how it's uh, doing an even bit all around the edge. Because really, in my mind, the main focus is kind of this quadrant over here where the trains are intersecting, the tracks are kind of curving around. So I want to really draw the eye over to that area. So what I'll do is hit this little cross or uh, matrix icon. It's like a little bullseye target. If I click on that, and then I can actually set the point uh, to be the center point of the vignette. And if I toggle this on and off now, you can see what, where it really leads your eyes, right over to this quadrant where we want that. Uh, kind of the, the edges are a little bit darker over here. And I think that been, brings a bit more drama overall to, uh, the, to the program. So that's a, a bit of an insight into how I use uh, On One Raw, how I can blend multiple images together to create um, you know, a scene I would have liked to have seen in real life, but unfortunately didn't have the time to see if it played out that way, and uh, made a simple conversion in black and white to, uh, to turn this into a very gritty uh, urban feel uh, for this uh, Chicago image. So if you're out there in Chicago, it's a great place to go shoot. It's a super place uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, while you're looking for other things. And uh, hope you have fun. Hope you learned something. And we'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.